Hi, I'm Greg's mum and this is the back of my head. The man with the cat on his shoulder. Welcome to Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> Trev, we're going to speak to the security people now. I want you to say, oi, oi, it's Ginger Trev. Yo, yo, it's Ginger Trev, the TM with James. <laughs> That's amazing, Trev. Yo, yo, it's Ginger Trev, the TM with James. <laughs> Good, which is uh, honestly never a good sign. I have to always do my best gigs when I'm furious, when I'm in a foul mood. And... Uh, just because we're doing this on, you know, DVD, we're gonna bung this on as well, if you don't mind. Oh, yeah, Belt just braces. Chuck it, chuck it on for now. I just don't quite trust things. Though. Funnily enough, it's my mum's fault. She told me when I was very young that you should always expect the worst in life. Always expect the worst. And then if things aren't quite as bad as that, if you don't get killed in whatever activity you're doing, and yeah, it's a little bonus. As a child, as a small child, he was sort of quiet and sweet. As he developed and went to school, then his personality came to light. Are we good to run <laughs> the start of the show? The yes, yeah. let's do that. Yeah. So we're, they're looking for the bonsai, a bit of the bonsai sound, and run the opening. If Fine. Possible. And uh, his friends grew, and that's when he started to become the leading light in humour. Question mark. <laughs> I am. Um... The Sludge Master. Help! I am the baby darling! Oh, you are not baby darling! What a word for me! <laughs> the end. All this is just a pathetic excuse to play the guitar on stage. That's why I've done all this. Going to make this gig, most people will be going, oh, it's really exciting. I'm doing my own DVD, a very, very great big opportunity. What I'm thinking is, I imagine there's going to be, you know, a bomb or a wild animal will have escaped. It's an awful way to live your life. And there's only young people watching. I can thoroughly recommend you don't do it the way I do it. You know, things are all right generally. Things will turn out okay. These are the only chords I know. I'm not joking. Too. It's great theatre and I'm chuffed with all this business. She was about to have a hair done the day before I took that, so that's been on my billboards around London, so she's furious. You never like the fact you've got direction. No, it makes me feel guilty because yeah. you're Catholic. Yeah. <laughs> it just amazes me. If I get one. But when you get one. It amazes me. I've only, I've only got one in the last 10 years when I had an electric shop. <laughs> <laughs> You'd know about it if I had one now because my head shrinks down to the size of a doll's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I love this theatre, it's brilliant. I've done it on my tour, which is why I've come back to do the DVD. I did it on my tour and we had the best time here. And yeah, it was, they were a great crowd and it was brilliant. But I also did the Royal Variety Show when um, uh, the room was full of. Uh, inordinately rich pensioners. And I think it's fair to say I, I didn't go down quite as well in that environment. But it was fine, it was nice. And it was an honour to be invited. But um, yeah, I don't think Princess Anne was particularly impressed. I love your little tiny trunk. 
I love the little tiny Chinese pot they put you in. I love that you are shrunk. Well, Greg. Oh my God, it's a bonsai tree. Hello. <laughs> Some don't understand how he can say the things he says about Bob and me and maybe his sister and, and not be horrified. So sorry! Frankly, I don't mind. I think what he says is never hurtful. Thanks, Greg. They're happy. Thanks. Thank you. All Thank done. you very much, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> I'm forgivable most of the times. Quality never dies. Except for swearing at me on national television. I haven't really forgiven him for that. He had to buy me a cardigan at Marks and Spencer's. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put that in. <laughs> it's nice that people see that they're on board, you know, that I'm not just a horrible bastard saying awful things about them without them knowing. It's nice that they're there. Because the reason I say awful things about them is because they're brilliant and they've got a brilliant sense of humour and we had such a mental laugh when I was growing up. I went to see a doctor recently because I thought there was something wrong with my ass. He goes, what's wrong? And I said, oh, I think things aren't right up there. And he went, oh, right. It'll probably sort itself out. And I went, well, do you, um, do you want to have a, do you want to have a look or what? And he went, my doctor went like this. <sighs> again, do you want me to put my finger guys. up there? And I went, no. No, I don't. <laughs> My mum's head. He's grey. Sure. He's standing at the back of the head. Yeah. Hairy. They're just a mental mess of a hundred and one things going on. Short, blonde hair. There's not much personality there. He dyed completely black. A really oddly highlighted blonde bob. She's gonna kill me. <laughs> That's the most odd question I've ever been asked. for a DVD extra, like a little Easter egg. <laughs> it's called the Extra Special uh, special Feature, and it's just Greg doing that in a white room for five minutes. Ooh. <laughs> You're gonna get some makeup done, mate. I'll come with you. All right. This is where I give Nancy a slightly unusual request <laughs> she won't be expecting. Which is? Black me up. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got any other requests apart from that? No, but I've got something to say. Yeah. You're drawing my eyebrows back in. I'm just giving them a little bit, yeah. Because you know what? Is that alright? No, it's fine. But I read this thing the other day that if you've got thyroid disease, the sides of your eyebrows drop out. Really? Yeah, so I went to the doctor and said the sides of my eyebrows have dropped out. No, you didn't, did you? I fucking did. <laughs> Is this a joke? No. <laughs> I said the sides of my eyebrows have dropped out. I think I might have a thyroid problem. And he said, okay, well, I'll test you. He yeah. tested me and he said, no, you haven't. Right. I'm afraid the sides of your eyebrows have just dropped out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> they just dropped out. <laughs> Would you say of all the people you've made up over your whole career, yeah. that my face is the best to make up? Absolutely. Why? Because it's perfect. In what sense? It's perfect. <laughs> it's just like, I mean, it's quite big, so you can put a lot of makeup on it. So you're definitely perfect. <laughs> Massive. Show. Looking forward to it, but first, before I come on, I'm going to bring my lovely support act on. This is the way I see it panning out. He'll come on, he'll be funny for a bit, then you can go and have a wee and a poo, then I'll come on. Happy? Is everyone happy? 
going to go wild and crazy for my very funny and lovely support act, the wonderful Mr. Ed Gumball. You're a very smart man, sir, all in black, the Johnny Cash look, and you're holding a tiny bottle of wine. I like that very much. I now imagine you as some sort of very upper-class giant. Um, what's your name, sir? Dave. Dave. Nice to Oh, it's gone now. It's not upper-class anymore. It's fucking Dave. Uh, what do you do, Dave? You just work in an office in town. And do you know what you do in that office, or do you just turn up and fuck off home again? What's this section going to be called? Greg eats some gum. They're very, very nice. Although um, a man did shout Jippos within two minutes of me being on stage. But they were a nice crowd apart from that one racist. On the circuit, on the grape circuit, I'm called the Shropshire Star. Game on. It hit the fucking rim. On the grape circuit, they call me the Grape Sorprendo. They do call him that. Just warming up. Just warming up. Right. Great. On the circuit, they call me Gang Great. <laughs> Game on. Oh! On the grape circuit, they call me Seller Grape. I just want you to know in the timeline of this, it is approximately 15 minutes before Greg records his DVD. On the grape circuit, they call me Great Paper. Oh! He rimmed it! When we went to see him um, after he did his degree, he did a part of his work was a show. And I saw that and I thought this has got potential because even as a mother, I thought he was brilliant. And then, of course, uh, needs must, he got a job, and Bob, being in the teaching profession, put him in a job, or helped him get a job as a teacher. And uh, I've always thought that was a mistake, but um, probably not, because a lot of his material came from being a teacher. So perhaps it was an inroad, but in a different, a longer direction than it should have been. We should do an interview, Ed. Ed's really good at interviewing me, so we should probably do a formal interview while we've got a bit of time, shall we? Yeah, definitely. Stop. So, Greg Davis, comedian. That's right, yeah. Right, hang on, mate, I've got makeup on. Recording your DVD. Yeah. In the back of my mum's head, of course. That's right. Are you looking forward to it? Um, no. <laughs> do you think there's a line in comedy? Do you think there's, is there stuff that you wouldn't joke about? Yeah. And what list them? I wouldn't joke about um, shitting in my own mouth. I wouldn't joke. Can I? I'll just stop you there. You definitely would. <laughs> All right, that was a bad example. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't joke about um, trying to ride a, trying to, someone my size trying to ride a dog. You talk about riding your own dick home. Yeah. I've just sort of had a long-term ambition, really, that. Um, Everyone says that as you get older, your testicles get more and more distended and, you know, big and whatever, floppy. And so I'm hoping that when I reach a certain age, my balls will be so big that I'll be able to harness, sort of harness up my own penis, sort of put a bit in the end of it and some reins, bring the head up. Rear it up. Yeah, and yeah. then get the, the balls will be like this. Do you, do you want to ask me another question? Because I'm on stage in five minutes now to record my DVD. Right, what's your pre-show pre, pre -show routine? I always um, uh, try and have a poo and fail. Right. That's it. That's it. Show. The difference in him is amazing from teaching he's a happy you know gets stressed who doesn't but he's happy so but I think he is um, 
is more emotional than he sometimes lets on. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Greg Davis! There is an element of truth and it makes you nervous saying things around him. And my friends are very careful because they know it might just pop out in a different way to how it was intended. This is the first review I had because I played them to my mum. Saying I'm going to do this in my show, what do you think of these? I wrote down what she said so I could get it right. Here it is. What's wrong with you, Greg? <laughs> You're a grown man. The most embarrassing story he's ever told me about me. Um, probably the Christmas one. Try and buy a house or get a girl pregnant. It's not normal, love. When they were talking about the blow job, you know, it was so uh, he got that total I I can't go into detail <laughs> because he did totally carried away, didn't he, with that. Um, that was embroidered, I think, slightly more than it should ever be embroidered. <laughs> oh shit it would be to be a bonsai. Bonsai. I'm glad I'm not a bonsai tree. I'd like to see him do the comedy and I'd like to see him, as he's dabbled in it, go on to um, more acting. This business, as I'm sure everybody knows, is such a, uh, you're only as good as your last performance, aren't you? Uh, that you need more strings to your bow and I think as many as he can get, yeah, just keep developing. Bonsai. I'm glad I'm not a bonsai tree. Bonsai. So I am gonna, I'm gonna really whack my head onto okay. it. But all it is is fun. It's polystyrene. It's cake. It's real cake. Yeah, and that's cake. That'll just collapse. Or I just want to break my nose or something. Like that. Here's the thing, right? No, I'm going to smash my face into it. I want to, when I come up, I want to be messy, so I do it a different cream. breaking my nose, it was fun. Before I asked him to alter the cake, I found out there was a plastic spike in it. So if I hadn't asked him to remove that, I would have also now only have one eye. I've got nothing else to say. I had a lovely time, thank you Salford. Thanks for being so nice, it was fun. Bye now. Bonsai. Have you not seen those posters? There's a lot of them around. It looks like a big grey microphone. <laughs>